Merry Christmas, and welcome back to another episode of PTV. I'm Kylie Russell. And I'm Kay Pockabeer. During Christmas, we all enjoy receiving a gift or two, but one of the most important aspects of Christmas isn't the receiving, but the giving of gifts and helping those in need. That's what members of the FCCLA aim to do as they prepare special gifts for those less fortunate. Take a look. I'm with the one beside it. So you do it with like the top and the bottom. In this Christmas season, PHS students do their part in giving back to others that are in need of help. We decided that we would repurpose t-shirts and so we made those t-shirts into bags and our classes today will be able to make about 60 bags and then we will take those to Salina and donate them. There's a program at Christ Cathedral there called Feed the Hungry and they have homeless people come every day at lunchtime and they give them a bag lunch and normally they get their bag lunch in like just a plastic grocery store bag but this way they'll have a reusable bag that they'll be able to use to carry their belongings and have things. FCCLA members from Smith Center and Ellis also help to show the importance of helping others. Yeah, we're trying to keep, teach them a couple different things. First of all, with just community service, it's a huge thing and everyone should do community service, not just because you have to, you should do it because you want to. It benefits so many different people. There are always people in need in a lot of communities. You will never go somewhere and not find people that are in need. And if you're willing to give, you might as well. Simple acts can help others. I think what we're doing is a really great cause because there's people out there who have nothing to carry things with and they're like trying to carry so much and they're not being able to. So I think what we're doing is a really good cause. To make a successful day, PHS students were able to donate 65 bags. For PTV, this is Emily Schneider. Mrs. Weisar's classes have been busy not only making bags and finishing up their quillow and pajama projects, but in the human growth and development class, students have also been learning what it might be like to care for an infant. Nathaniel Huntley explains. Ready or not, students are learning what it might be like to care for an infant. In human growth and development class, we have been studying about the development of the human um, since the beginning of the school year, gradually working our way through from conception until the end of the year when we will be talking about um, the decline of people's bodies near the end of their life geriatric care, all of that. So at this point, we are to the point where a person has just given birth to a baby, and so we're talking about the care and treatment of infants. Uh, we're learning a lot about um, the different stages of infancy and how to care to, for an infant once it's born, and we'll eventually make our way all the way to the end of the human life cycle. Students care for the automated babies for at least 24 hours. Care includes using a car seat, feeding and changing the babies, and finding appropriate child care when necessary. After someone has had the baby at least one night, or sometimes an entire weekend, um, they look a little bit like the walking wounded when they come in the next day, pretty worn out, just like a new parent looks. Um, it's been their first experience to have to be up several times during the night. I think the maximum was um, one person had to get up 17 times with their baby, which is a little unusual. That doesn't normally happen. Um, but just like human babies, um, some of the students would see me in the hall and say, my baby's been so great today in class. And I would think, tonight's going to be awful for you. Uh, it's a little awkward at times, but learning a lot of things that will help me in the future. It's just kind of a matter of remembering them. Colonization approached its end. Sparta, which had taken practically. Are you listening? You need to be listening to this. This is important. For PTV, this is Nathaniel Huntley. Happy holidays, everyone, and welcome to the very special Christmas Minute to Win It. Today, four lucky contenders have been specifically chosen to participate in this event. We have Jeremy Ford, Colette Kennedy, Tyce Jerby, and Nicole Huntley. For this challenge, they have to take this candy cane loaded with eight nuts and stack the nuts on top of each other before time runs out. If the tower happens to fall or they run out of time, well, so who can beat the clock? All right, you have a minute to win it. Go.
your time is up. Collect Kennedy. You have a minute to win it. Go. No, no, no. <laughs> Do you even see a chance at this point? <laughs> Alright, Thais, you have a minute to win it. Go. <laughs> okay, Nicole, you have a minute to win it. Go. I think she won. <laughs> Did I win? What's your Christmas tree at home like? Well, it's kind of a random assortment of ornaments collected throughout the years. Everything from baby's first Christmas to piano playing snowman. My mom thinks every ornament we receive needs to go on the tree. How about yours? My tree is the same way. At least you don't have 10-year-old candy canes. Although some families follow typical traditions when decorating their trees, others take a unique approach, as Annie Weiser will show us in this next story. It's that time of the year again, and people are busting out their creativity with their Christmas trees. Uh, we put this up last year. Um, it's from deer antlers that we walk and, and look for the sheds every year. Um, kind of turned out to be a, a contest with the kids and James and I. and We just decided that we wanted to try this out and like it and have kept it up. It was fun when we were putting it back together because we could find one that was unique and we remembered where we found that one. Another unique approach to Christmas trees consists of woodworking. I um, just go get old barn wood out of an old house or an old barn. I like to make different stuff. I like to just kind of in my mind get ideas. All that kind of stuff I just make in the garage in my spare time. When I get bored or something I go out there and piddle and mess around. While some enjoy crafting trees, others prefer to grow them. Well, my Christmas tree is a pineapple plant. I started it from the top of a pineapple that I had bought at our local grocery store. Her thumb is certainly greener than most. I just like to take something and see if I can make it grow. I just like to try different things. 
Even those who have traditional Christmas trees can find a way to put their own personal touch on it. The majority of the ornaments are Hallmark sports ornaments that we've collected over the years. Um, I started collecting them actually before the kids were even born and then we've just kept up with it. I think this tree is a total epitome of our family because we are all involved in sports in some way, shape or form. I think it just represents us really well. For PTV, this is Annie Wisar. Ho, 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 boys and girls, Christmas is coming. I hope you've all been good this year. Oh, look, here comes Susie now. Susie, have you been good this year? Oh, hi, Santa. Yes, I've been really good. Have you been brushing your teeth like a good little girl? Cheese, yes, Santa, squeaky clean. Ho, ho, ho. What good teeth, little Susie. Now, what would you like for Christmas? I want a motorbike, Santa. Oh my, Susie. I'll see what I can do. But first, can you name my reindeer? You know, Prancer and Dancer and Donner and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Land Vixen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yes, that is correct. Oh, Rudolph, we'll see him in our next segment. Ho, ho, ho. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Wow, Kay, are you in choir? No. That might be good news for the choir. Speaking of the choir, they recently performed in the annual Christmas concert. Here's how that went. The PHS Choir in a Minute showcased their talents in this year's winter vocal concert. The concert featured a variety of songs and dances. My favorite song was Sing On Dance On because we were able to do that with the choir, so it was choir and minute together and it turned out really nicely. Director Kelsey Pinkerton not only led her students, but also added a special performance of her own. Mrs. Iman and I were talking about how to fill the time when the amendment needed to get dressed, and we both really liked that song, and so we just tried it for fun, and we decided one day that we would do it. So a couple weeks ago, we started practicing. Another unique part of this program included a candle-lit tribute to Silent Night. Um, this year, Silent Night is actually 200 years old, so we wanted to do something to celebrate that. So that's why we added the candles, and I think people liked that. Overall, the concert was a success. I thought it went really well. Everyone seemed like they had a lot of fun, and they tried really hard. I thought tonight's concert went very well. Um, I enjoyed it and I think the kids enjoyed it too. Um, it was a little more music, but uh, we just like to get people into the Christmas spirit. For PTV, this is Traylon Gross. I think they need me. Um, right. Well, our amendment singers not only perform in the winter concert, but they also spread the holiday cheer by performing in the community-wide Christmas cantata. Take a look. Community members came together for this year's cantata, Behold a Savior, directed by Kelsey Pinkerton. I think it was really awesome. Um, it was fun to sing with everybody and um, my son uh, especially. Along with singing, cantata members bring other talents as well. I was the percussionist for the cantata. I got involved with the cantata by, well, I just heard they needed a percussionist and I asked Kelsey Pinkerton and she was like, sure, you can be the percussionist. And I was like, yay. Highlighting the performance was soloist Kelly Hineke. Magnificat, it was um, Mary's solo because I've always wondered um, what that would really feel like. I mean, she's a teen. She 
is unmarried and she has this huge miracle happening to her and um, always the solos that I've sang over the years that had to do with with that um, Mary's part and her role in everything just has always meant a lot to me. Everybody sang their hearts out, everyone sang meaningfully and yeah it went well. After Sunday's performance, Post Prom Committee prepares meals for fundraising. Several PHS students and parents work together to prepare and deliver meals. For PTV, this is Thomas Bowie. Christmas, Minute 2, Win It. We're here round two with the Snowfall Challenge. The objective is to get 15 cotton balls in your coffee mug in a minute. You can go when the timer starts. Ava, you have a minute to win it. Kylie, you have a minute to win it. Can she still beat Ava? Ooh. Oh no! Oh, she's so close. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Done. <laughs> Sharon, you have a minute to win it. Now it's time for our sports update with Trey and John. Hey Panther fans, welcome to our sports update. I'm Trey Sides. And I'm John Hunnicutt. The Panther football season is now complete, but we sure ended the season in fashion. Here's a look at how the state game went down in Salina. On the field and in the stand. The Phillipsburg Panthers look to cap off their undefeated season as they took on the Riley County Falcons in the 2A state championship game in the Salina District Stadium. On the offense's first possession, the Panther running back fumbles the football and Riley County recovers. Anytime you turn the ball over and kind of get on your heels defensively, uh, uh, makes you a little bit nervous, but uh, our kids have been through it a lot this year and uh, uh, find, just find a way to bounce back and they really did a good job with that. And, on the ensuing possession, the Panther defense forced a turnover of their own as senior Trey Sides intercepts the pass and takes it into Riley County territory. A few plays later, Trey Sides connects with brother Ty Sides on a 25-yard touchdown pass. John Honeyka adds the point after to put the Panthers up 7 to nothing. 
The defense continues to hold strong as Kaysen Keaton makes this tackle. And a few plays later, Jarrett Shelton recovers the Falcon fumble to give the ball back to the Panther offense. After back and forth empty possessions, the Panther offense prevails once again as Trey Sides hits brother Ty Sides for a big game. Three plays later, Sides connects with Nathan Moon on a 26 yard touchdown pass. Hunnicutt adds the extra point, extending the Panther lead 14 to nothing. The Panther defense slows down the Falcon drive once again as senior Jonathan Hunnicutt and senior Tanner Ragsdale get through the Falcon line for quarterback sack. Um, they just called a uh, blitz on the left and I just ran in there and was looking for the ball just to tackle them, so it worked out. Two plays later, sophomore Ty Sides closes out the first half with this interception. The Panthers lead Riley County 14-0 heading into the locker room. number 17, Jonathan Honeycutt. To open the second half, the Riley County Falcons begin inside Panther territory after this big special teams return. With their backs against the wall, the Panther defense keeps the Falcons off the scoreboard as Kaysen Keaton gets this hit on Riley County running back. On the fourth and goal, Nathan Moon bats down the pass to give the ball back to the Panthers. Senior John Honeycutt hits a pair of field goals, this one from 45 yards out, to put the Panthers up 20 to nothing. The Panther defense get yet another turnover as Jarrett Shelton recovers his second fumble of the day to set up this three yard touchdown run by Tanner Ragsdale, making the score 27 to zero and sealing the deal for the Panthers second state championship in four years. And presenting this year's state championship team trophy. I mean, it's amazing to go 13 and 0 and get the state championship. Oh, pretty good couple games that were a little closer than we would have liked but we got through it and got what we wanted the W one state another ring. Not every day you get to go for a state championship so um, I'm so proud of this group of kids the way they they've come together as a group. For PTV this is Trey Sides and John Hunnicutt. Winter sports are underway as Panther basketball teams look to improve their records from last year. Kick off the season, the Panthers took on the Ellis Railers as the Lady Panthers won in dominating fashion, winning 67 to 37. The boys also started off the season with the win as they took down the Railers 50 to 39. Both teams then traveled to Russell to compete in the Amos Morris basketball tournament. In the first round, the Lady Panthers lost to a very solid Central Plains team, but then bounced back in the second round as they defeated the Plainville Cardinals 42 to 41. In the championship game, the Lady Panthers faced off against Central Plains for the second time in five days. The Lady Oilers proved to be too much, defeating the Lady Panthers and handing the Panthers a second place finish. On the boys' side, the Panthers took on the Russell Broncos in the first round and defeated them 60-48. to In the second round, the Panthers faced off against the Smith Center Redmen and defeated them 66-56. to Just like the girls, the Panthers faced a tough Central Plains team in the finals. The Oilers handed the Panthers their first loss of the season, beating them 46 to 27. Last Friday, the Panthers traveled to Hill City for an MCL matchup. Here's the highlights on that. The Lady Panthers traveled to Hill City to take on the Lady Ringnecks in an MCL matchup. Phillipsburg takes the lead in the first quarter with this play. Now finds Wells, right wing three is on its way and it's good. The Panthers extended their lead when Christian Wells found Jenna Hoover for another two points. The inside attack continued to be strong. For Hoover on the baseline, now to Schneider, Schneider up and good. The Panther perimeter game also was successful. Spots up for three, buries it. The Panthers head to the locker room at half, leading 26-17. In the third quarter, Kylie Soliday continues the offensive attack for the Lady Panthers. Soliday, Soliday drives in, stops and pops in the paint, and it rolls in. And later picks up the assist with this play. Kicks out to Wood, left corner three's on its way, and it's good. The Panthers maintained control and went on to win 27-58.
For PTV, this is Lakin. In the boys' matchup, the Panthers look to improve their record and get another league win. PHS picks up the energy as Nathan Moon finds Austin Miller on the backside alley-oop. The Panther defense also rattles the ring next. Again looking, still looking, throws it in and Ty sides, tracks it down. Ty on the fast break, layup is good. PHS pressure does it again. Aaron McDowell tipped by Keaton, Keaton tips it up again in the hands of Ty sides. Ty, layup is good, nice effort that time by Kagan Keaton. The transition game was also strong as the Panthers lead at half, 27 to 20. To Trey, ahead to Ty, Ty on the layup, and good. In the third quarter, the sides boys connect. I had a huge first quarter as Ty alley hoops to Trey. Trey lays it in. The Panthers' lead is extended when Trey sides finds Austin Miller for the baseline jumper. And Ty sides makes good on another steal. Ty stops and pops for three, buries it. The Panthers get the win. The Panthers defeat the Hill City Ringnecks 54 to 37. TV, this is Kylie Russell. The Panthers are also getting after it on the mat as the wrestling team competed in four competitions. The Panthers recently traveled to Abilene to compete. Leading the way was Traylon Gross going 3-2 and, and Austin going 3-2. and two. The wrestling team will be back in action after Christmas break as they travel to Oberlin to duel the Red Devils. We've also had a few Panthers signed to some college teams. Congrats to Alexi Beach for signing to Kansas Westland for volleyball. And also congrats to Ashley Babcock for signing to Fort Hayes for track. Time's up for this sports update. I'm John Hunnicutt. And I'm Trey Sides. Go, Go Panthers. Panthers. Welcome back. Ho, ho, ho. We have Rudolph here looking rather dapper. Oh, Santa, I can't wait to fly around the world lighting the way for you. Ho, ho, ho. I'm excited, too. Say, Rudolph, what's your favorite snack? I like carrots. Yes, those are a healthy treat. Now, Rudolph, what's your favorite thing about Christmas? My favorite thing is flying around the world with Santa delivering presents to all the little boys and girls. That's my favorite too, ho, ho, ho. I've got lots of letters from PHS teachers. Really, what do they want? Well, Rudolph, Miss Struckoff wants a fireplace for her classroom. And although we've gotten Mr. Weinman many baseball books in the past, he would like another baseball book. What about Mr. Bowman? Oh, he's on the naughty list. Stay off the naughty list, boys and girls, and have a Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Are you still singing Christmas tunes? Tis the season to be jolly. Oh my. Okay, I'll leave the singing to others, but PHS SA classes really were decking the halls in this year's door decorating contest. Abigail McCartney shows us how that went. PHS students are putting time into showing their Christmas spirit by decorating classroom doors. We've been working on it for about two weeks. <laughs> There was a variety of themes this year, from the Grinch to Christmas trees. Our theme was Christmas movies and music. Christmas tree! Students found inspiration from a variety of resources. Well, my mom did a door decoration for the elementary school library, and she did the same idea, but with books. So the door decorating contest got started a couple years ago when the student council kind of wanted to get into the Christmas theme. Um, so along with the door decorating, we decorate the pillars and we put a Christmas tree out for the students. Stuco created the rules and guidelines for the competition. We don't have too many set rules. Um, we do put a couple restrictions on using the glass and no lights or anything. Um, but we kind of just let the students have free reign and decorate how they want.
And the winners are Mrs. Pockabeer with the best Christmas theme, Mrs. Sides with most original, and Mrs. Pinkerton with overall creativity. For PTV, this is Abby McCartney. Christmas, minute two, win it. Our last challenge is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be teacher against student. So, this game is called Red Nose Dive. What they have to do is they're going to have a string attached to a little red ball. They put the string in their mouth, and then their noses will be covered in Vaseline. So, when the string is in their mouth, they have to swing forward and get the ball under their nose. So, they have a minute to win it. Here we have Miss Ruckoff and Eric Moon. You guys ready? Absolutely. All right, begin. <laughs> oh, that's not working at all. Okay. Our last contenders today are Mrs. Pinkerton and Trent. You guys ready? Alright, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> oh, I moved my foot. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, oh, I heard it fell off. Hey. Oh. <laughs> the PTV staff would like to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. I'm Kylie Russell. And I'm Kay Pockabeer. Stay classy, Phillipsburg High. Phillipsburg High.